Okay, so here are, I, I just really quickly wrote our equations up here right. for reference. So give the position of mug z after 20 seconds. So we take the mug z equation and we plug in 20. So that's 800 minus 4 times 20, which is 800 minus 80, which is 720. What, what, yeah. And... 150 plus 20, which is 170. Right. So 720 comma 170. X, X then Y always in that order. Yes. Yeah. So after how many seconds will Muggsy leave the screen? Well, now Muggsy this time, he's going all the way across the screen from left to right. He actually exit at a, he exits the screen at a Y coordinate of zero. He does. Okay. And so a Y coordinate, I think you mean an X coordinate. I meant an X coordinate. An X coordinate. And actually because of our graph, we actually we, technically we know the, know the point. as well. So yeah. we just would have to pick either one. It's yeah. safer to pick the X value yes. in case we weren't 100% yes. accurate. Yes, in case we're not right on that 350 marker. So let's go ahead and use zero for the X coordinate. Okay, so, so we will plug in zero equals 800 minus 4T. Right. So we can add 4T over and get T equals 200, 200 seconds. Oh, these that's these a are nice some number. these are some slow crawling bugs yeah, in my are. humble opinion. Maybe they're like those really slow moving like beetle thingies. Maybe they're ants that Maybe they're are snails. so ti tiny. But is a snail a bug? I don't teach science. Okay. Uh, <laughs> At what position, ordered pair, on the screen, will the paths of Bugsy and Mugsy cross? Now look, we see that they're going to cross, but this could be like the whole stop sign intersection sort of thing. They might not cross at the exact same time, right. but they might. They so, might. So the first thing we got to do is figure out where they cross so that then we can figure out what time right. each of them are get there. Right. Now here's the thing with this. We need to know the exact X and Y coordinate, not just the X coordinate and then just the Y coordinate. We need the whole... Everything needs to match here. Right. So what we have to do, unfortunately, is come up with a normal slope intercept equation right. for each of these. Right. So we're we... basically eliminating the parameter. Yep. But because of all the information we have in our table and on our graph, it's actually there's an it's, easier it's way. Not, it's not bad. You can um, remember you can use point slope. We know the slope for both of these. We mentioned it earlier. Right. Okay, so you can use point slope and help you get the equations, or you could use just the table and, and maybe a little, like, thought process. You know, the, and, and on this one, I think you could also use slope intercept as it works out for this particular for problem. For this one, yeah. It, the, we found, we were able to see the y-intercepts for both of them. So right. for, for Bugsy, it has a slope of up three, right two, and it has a y-intercept of 100. Of a hundy. <laughs> And for Muggsy, we've got a Muggsy. slope of, we're going up one, but left four, right, which is so negative, negative one fourth. And then if you look at your graph, if you drew it accurately, you can see that it's at two, uh, 350. 350, he crosses the y axis at 350. So we can actually use these two things together now to, to, to help figure us out. figure out where that actual point of intersection right. is. Right, we're solving. This, this system of equations, which I think is something we recently did. You know, uh, you could use a matrix. You could use a matrix. That seems a little bit overboard. We could use substitution or you elimination. You could use an inverse matrix. Let's just use, let's use substitution you because they're both y equals. Gaussian or you could graph. elimination. You could graph them. You could do reduced row echelon form. I'm just going to set them equal to each other. Is that okay with you? You could uh, use substitution. Okay, let's use substitution. You could use That's a great idea. elimination. You could graph both of them. Yes, you could. And that would be pretty easy since they're both y equals. So here, to solve this, I would multiply by 4 personally and get rid of my fractions. And so when you do that, you have 4 times 3 you got to multiply halves, both sides of that equation by 4. So when you, this is, is a good trick. This is a great trick, actually, to have in your bag of tricks for solving an algebra problem. Just remember to do it to everything. Yeah. So that's... Uh, going to be negative x yep. and then 4 times 350. Four time, I'm on it. 4 times 350. Is that 1,500? It is uh, 1,400. 1,400. So then we want to get our x's on one side and our numbers on the other. So I'm going to add x over and get 7x equals and subtract the 400. So that's 1,000. Oh, boy. So x equals 1,000 over 7. I get 142.8. Five, seven. All right, that's our x value. We got to plug it back in somewhere up here um, to get our y value. And you, so, when you plug it back in, use the 1,000 over 7 part so that we can get as accurate as possible. 
Or keep it in your calculator and just... Or, yeah, or keep it in your calculator. So if I do that, if I times 1,000 over 7 by 3 halves and then add 100, what do three I get? 3 divided by 2 times 1,000 divided by 7 plus 10. Oh, plus 100. It's 2,200 over 7, which is 314.286. Okay, so that's our ordered pair, 142.857 comma 314.286. Should we go back and look and see if that looks right? Let's do. 142-ish, 314-ish. So 142, 142, 314. 314. Yes! Yes. <laughs> that looks right. That is, that is it's a, so exciting. <laughs> uh, Thank the heavens. Okay, so we got okay. their their point of intersection. Now we need to know when each of them cross or get to that point. Right. So that means that we have to use the parametric equation. Back to That's parametrics. where right. our time is. And right. so we need to take either x or y for each of them and set equal to one of these two points. Right. Okay, because what should happen is 2t equals 142 and 100 plus 3t equals... 314, those should give us the same values for yeah, T. Yeah, it doesn't matter which, which so, one you pick. So pick maybe I, the easier one? I think the easiest one to pick out of all of this for bugs is for bugsy, and that's the XB equals 2T. Like, like that's... That's the easiest thing yeah, ever. You just like divide by sure. two. Yeah. Divide by two. Oh, all right, I'm on it. Divided by dose. 71.4286. All right. 71.4286. That's how many seconds it took for him seconds. to crawl to that spot. And let's give uh, Muggsy a look. So uh, I'd go with the I'd second go, one. I'd go with the Y one, yeah. So 150 plus T equals 314.286. So subtract 150 over. 164.2. And so we didn't have to necessarily write all those decimals down, but no. now we come to part I. Will they collide? No, because they, won't. they get there at different times. Completely different times. Right. Not even close. No. So if one of them is like the insect of prey, then he missed his meal. Yeah. But if they, you know, were lonely bugs and were hoping yeah, to if, like go yeah, out on a date, right? Then, then they they missed out. Then so. they got the, at the same place at the wrong time. That yeah. reminds me of the first date I ever had with my wife, which I don't want to talk about right now. I don't want you to either. So let's just uh, let's just 